Hello fashion sewers, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to use a blind hemming foot. I'm Colleen Geely and this is Fashion Sewing Vlog TV. Here I'm showing you the difference between the blind hemming foot and the regular foot. This is your regular foot so it should look something similar to that. So I'll just get that out of the way. Now with a blind hemming foot you see that there are two different widths to the actual foot itself. This narrower foot is what travels on the fold of fabric, so it keeps the fold in place as you actually stitch. Now you use a blind hemming foot for when you want your stitching not to be shown on the right side of your garment or very little of it. And it's a method that you use obviously when you're using your sewing machine. I have a sample fabric sample here that I'm going to show you how to use the hemming foot on. I've now hemmed it. I've given it a basting stitch, this is the right side, I'm going to turn it over onto the wrong side. Now I've basted it at least one centimetre and I think it's three eighths of an inch away from the edge of the actual hem. And then what's going to happen then is that I'm going to be putting it on my machine in that manner and then the foot is going to run along the side the hem of the fold and travel all the way down. So half the foot is resting on the fold and the other half is going to be resting on the turned up hem. I've now attached my blind hemming foot and when you've got the blind hemming foot you need the blind hem stitch and this is this one here which is a zigzag stitch. And uh, as you find your zigzag stitch the next thing you need to be thinking about and this all depends on the fabric that you're using is the tension your stitch length and your stitch width so do practice now I've got my work so this is my hem that I'm going to be doing and I've got it on the wrong side and then I'm going to fold the hem over so now I've got a soft fold now that should be um, where you've actually done your basting stitch and then I'm going to put it under my feet and I'm going to make sure that this narrow foot here, the narrow part of the foot, is resting on the fold. You don't, you don't want to make sure that it's coming onto the flatter part just on the fold because that helps to keep it in control and also helps to anchor the longer of the zigzag stitch. Got that in position. Needle down and I'm stitching away. So what's happening as I'm stitching is that four little small zigzag stitches are actually on the flatter part of the hem, the turned up hem, and one stitch anchors itself onto the fold. Hopefully you can see as I'm going along. So you make sure you've really got to be careful because you want to make sure that you don't stitch the smaller zigzags onto the fold. As I'm stitching along, he actually picks it up. Now I'm actually using a knitted fabric here, a stretch. You can also do with woven. And remember, a zigzag stitch allows it to give it that little bit of a stretchability. Now, hopefully, you can see that. I've done it in a white there so you can actually hopefully see that. I'll take it over to my work surface and I'll show you in a lot more detail. Now hopefully you can actually see the actual stitch, the blind hemming stitch. If I just tease it out there a little bit you should see there's about four little zigzag stitch on the flatter part of the fabric and then one larger one anchoring onto the actual fold of the fabric. And being as it zigzags, it works with stretchy fabric. It also works with woven, and I'll show you um, what I've done with the woven fabric. Now, if I just pull the hem, so you can actually see the hem, it's quite decorative, as you can see there. So this is the right side, and now I'll turn it over and show you the wrong side. So there we have a blind stitch, and practically visible to the eye, and I've used white thread as well. The demonstration that I did for you was on a stretch fabric and it, and um, 
on this little test piece I've got here is on a woven fabric and it's so important regardless of what type of fabric you're working with always do a little tester so I did this little tester on woven fabric just to show you and as you can see here we have the normal tension that I would have used if I was doing a straight stitch so I needed to test it to get it right for the fabric that I'm working with and that I'm happy with as well so um, I increased it the, the stitch length and width and yeah I was relatively happy I think I wanted just a little bit more so I still did a little bit more practice and I ended up with this one so I was quite happy with that and if I just turn it around to the side hopefully you can get a better picture of what the stitch is actually doing and on a woven fabric and in this one in particular this is what it looks like now you can actually see that I've used white thread and you wouldn't be able to see so much of the actual stitching there if you're using obviously the colour that matches your fabric but you'll see a little pinprick uh, more so on a woven fabric. Just to recap, using a hemming foot is another option open to fashion sewers. You have a choice of whether you want to use it on knitted or woven fabrics. Personally I think it's much more effective on a knitted fabric because when you see it on the right side it really can be invisible. Do remember, I must stress, you need to remember always always do a practice run because fabrics act differently depending on the weight and the kind of fabric you're using and also about personal choice so always make sure that you change your tension, your stitch length, stitch width and anything else that you need to in order to suit your sewing projects so you'll be happy. Any questions, please put them in the comment box below and I'll see you next time.